Lombard, you can do just that. ICB is enrolling students for day and evening classes right now. You can learn how to be a sports talk show host, a producer, do play-by-play -play or shoot and edit video. Plus, you'll have a chance to get internships where you can tap into the knowledge of industry pros. They have affordable tuition and financial aid for those who qualify. And with job placement assistance, you can start your new career. And welcome one, welcome all. Dr. Pete alongside here, the one and only joining you for your DePaul broadcast during the season and joining us here again now at the NCAA Collegiate Challenge. Brennan Marshall, Marshall, welcome to the Collegiate Challenge here at the Great Lakes Center in Aurora, DePaul versus Purdue. Glad to be here, especially this early in the morning. I take it that's a joke. I take it that's a joke, but that's fine. No, 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 that was serious. That was <laughs> Okay, all right, we'll go with that. DePaul gonna go far to near on the radio dial near to far for Purdue. Purdue wearing the away whites with uh, short sleeve with black trim to Paul, the long sleeve blue with white sleeves. Live here on the live stream account here on SportsTownChicago.com in a league of our own. So again, excited to be here, excited to be a part of such a great exposition and ex Buzz, I always screw up that word. Exhibition. I said Exhibition. that wrong. Exhibition. You know what Ex I said yesterday? And exposition. You know what I said yesterday? It was, an ex it was like an expo, like an exposition, because they should each like have gear, like Purdue t-shirts, DePaul hats, you know, that really uh, m make it a thing. I think they have them outside. They probably do. They probably do. <laughs> but again, far to near is DePaul. Near to far is going to be Purdue. Uh, Marsha, really quickly go through some of the players on the court for DePaul. Well, for DePaul, starting out in the front line will be the Abby Fleener. The Abby Fleener is, I guess, what uh, we need to call her now. She's uh, going to be up front with Natalie Rizzo and Vesela Zapranova. Starting off to serve will be number five, normally wearing number 10, the defensive specialist, Aubrey Horde. And she'll be back there with Callie Hubner and Natalie Allison Rooks, excuse me, will be at the front line as well. She is the libero as we start the action. Tip over the top by Rizzo, and Rizzo gets the first kill to start things off here at the Collegiate Challenge. One nothing Rizzo. She's going to have a big spot next year for the 2013 Blue Demons. And for Depu for Purdue frontline Annie Drews, number 18, outside hitting freshman, along with um, Valerie Nicole. She's starting out there, and uh, Sam Ep Epinesa, Pete. Uh, you got it. And right there, Epinesa with the first kill for the Boilermakers. I'm going to wreck it. You like that? Wreck it, I Ralph? Ah. Uh? Ah, ah, I see. But Ep Epinesa, as you were telling me before the game, recruited for Purdue as a sophomore yeah. in high school. That's pretty impressive. And a all-star of the 2011 Illinois High School Volleyball All-Star Game. But Libero serves over, is going to be for Purdue. Kramer set across the middle. Quick one set, down kill. Big kill right there for number 12, Kiara Jones. Purdue's up to one. Yeah, good little quick set in the middle there, and Kiara Jones with a nice setup, had an open spot, and when you can set up for a spike there and you have it all the time in the world to look where you want to spike it, it's nasty, it's a kill. Kramer back to serve, hop serve, goes a bit far, that one goes far, good communication by DePaul to tie it up at two apiece. Interesting colored courts here, we have a red court and, you know, a blue... Uh, sideline and uh never been looks here before like, never been here before oh, it looks like rubber and all the yeah this is pretty uh, well this is schmancy uh zapranova with the jump serve quick set right there bringing it down another kill hitting the net though actually for purdue and depaul is going to get the point and your friend and mine you did a lovely uh bio on her zapranova yeah she hasn't told me what she thought of it so i guess she hates it you know what it, it Sometimes silence is the best medicine, so we'll just go with that. <laughs> Lucky 13, Zapranova with the big jump, and the ace! Look at that, ace is the place. 4-2, the Blue Demons with the two-point lead early on. 
The toughest thing to defend, whether it's a serve or a spike, is a fastball, and the libero Kramer just couldn't get anything in the air, or couldn't get the return in the air. Zappernova bounces a few times. Two-point lead here at the Great Lakes Center in Aurora on SportsOnChicago.com. Jump serve over, bump. Good pass up toward the middle. Taking a left-hand stab and not able to get to it in time is going to be Aubrey Horde not able to make the adjustment for three-year score. And Kira Jones with her second kill so far of the of the Purdue Boilermakers third point. Set serve over by Davis. Dig left side and no Boilermaker can get to that one, including Rachel Davis, who we had a chance to sit down with yesterday. Again, for all of these audio podcasts, folks, make sure you go to sportsonchicago.com. We got to talk to Rachel Davis for about 15 minutes from Purdue and talk to the Abby Fleener and coach Anadia Edwards from DePaul. 5-3, your score. Back to serve now. She's going to be the boss in the middle of this upcoming season. Natalie Rizzo. Back row, Davis on the slide. Down. Big kill again by Kiara Jones. And that Davis to Jones connection is really showing itself early here. Well, Especially when you can get a kill and hit it right before the end line, get it right in bounds at the back court. That's there's no way to defend that one. Back to serve now is going to be the uh, otherworldly Epinesa, as she has been called so often throughout her high school and now collegiate career. Massive jump serve down underneath it. Good set. Ten foot line Zapranova goes for the kill, but can't quite clear the net. Set was kind of low from Horde. Five five year score. Do you have a? Uh you know where Epinesa is from? Edwardsville. Edwardsville, so she is from Illinois. Eh? Yep, Edwardsville, Illinois, way down south. Good dig, back row by Rooks, set up right across the middle trying to get the kill. No dice there, was Fleener. Point down, 6-5 now your score, Purdue leads, and Epinesa back to serve again. Yeah, Epinesa has that Vessel of Zapranova like jump serve and fastball serve, so. Yeah, and the snap of the wrist. The, the, those two snap the wrist unlike uh, anybody I've seen at the collegiate ranks. Epinesa, big jump serve again. Back row, Rooks underneath it cleanly. Roof at the net, and this roof provides you shelter. Number 10, Katie Griffin, 7-5, Purdue with a little rally. Two-point differential now. Purdue in the home whites near to par. Big jump serve. And Epinesa Ouch. hits teammate Katie Griffin in the back of the dome. So hopefully she, she she's smiling it off right now. <laughs> I would not want to get hit by an Epinesa fastball at any point in time in my life. Boy, you got <laughs> I think I think you I think she owes Griffin dinner after I, that. I, one. Uh, dinner, lunch, at least coffee. I, I don't I don't even or know. Or a date. There, there you go. Back to serve is gonna be Henesis Reyes. Fleener near side. Hubner goes for the kill. No dice. Ten foot line sub Zapranova tips over and point gonna go for it. Oh, reach over called by DePaul. Eight six your score. Marshall, you called a lot of games for the Blue Demons this past season. What's something you'd like to see them work on and improve on in this offseason to bring in the 2013? Well, they at the end of the season, they did a great job of keeping rallies alive, keeping games alive, and not giving up on games. And you'd like to see that obviously continue um, in the spring and on into next year. Fleener to Hubner. Hubner double block. Nobody's getting to that one. Purdue says, ain't nobody got time for that. 9-6. You ever hear that? Ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, of course. Who hasn't heard that okay. one? <laughs> well, I hadn't until like a month ago, and I. So yeah, you're late to the party. I, I am late to the party, but now I'm the. Uh, now you are the party. I am. You know, I was gonna say that. I'm like, I don't know if that works, but you know what? If you say it does, it does. <laughs> Take down low. By DePaul, blocked at the net, taking a few stabs at it, not able to clear it all the way. Is Randy Leith and 10-6 your score four point difference now as Purdue leads DePaul timeout called on the court we'll take it with them right here on sportssoundchicago.com Virgin how do I become a DJ how can I hang out at cool shows go backstage be on the air play cool music well, it can actually happen to you. A career working in radio or TV can happen at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting trains you for careers in both radio and TV, on air and behind the scenes, whatever you want. Classes meet three days or nights a week, and in just 10 short months, 
you'll be ready to start your career in broadcasting. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting offers hands-on training, cool internships, job placement assistance, and financial aid for those who qualify. They're going to help you get into a career that you can love at their suburban campus in Lombard. All you got to do is go to BeOnAir.com to get info. That's BeOnAir.com. Or you can text RADIO to 99161. You can also get your broadcast portfolio started right now by being Q1's concert correspondent at Jamboree. You'll get VIP tickets to the show, shoot interviews with the crowd, and score 100 bucks in concert cash. Vamos a disfrutar el sabor de la vida. And we're back. Sports on Chicago.com. 10 6 your score. Purdue going near to far. Bit of a hop serve. Genesis Reyes. Back row. Pick up cleanly. He Hubner on the far side. And that's what you like to see coming out of a timeout. 10 7. Actually, you've been away for a while. I think that was Rooks that got the kill there. But uh, DePaul has, at the very end of last season, been able to come out of timeouts and keep rallies going. You know, normally, early in the season, they get down 10 6. The set would be over. But right now. First point right off the timeout, and they got it. Slide down, Rooks not able to get to it in time, and Purdue answers right back immediately. Big kill across the middle, recently subbed into the game is Faye Adeleha, 11-7, your score, Boilermakers lead. Back to serve now for the Boilermakers is going to be Valerie Nickel. Set far side, Zepernova goes for a kill, good cleanup pickup there by Kramer. Good dig by... Back row and not able to get to it in time. Was DePaul is about to say, Hennessy Reyes did a great job in the back row. You know, talk about being a, a chameleon. You know, third season now, we're going to be calling DePaul Blue Demon Volleyball on ChicagoGansportsRadio.com. She has done everything. You wanted to be outside, you wanted to set, you wanted to be Libro, DS, you name it. Oh, good play! Right across the middle at Aubrey Horde, finding a gap at the net, taking advantage of it. Yeah, and Reyes at the back line, that last. That last dig was a good dig, but almost too good because she set up the Purdue kill very nicely. Yeah, exactly. Rooks serves over. Quick set across the middle. Left-hand attack, and the lethal lefty strikes again. Annie Drews, 13-8, Purdue leads. Yeah, it looked like she hit that one off the end of her hand, and uh, unfortunately for DePaul, it was kind of went in an area they weren't expecting it to go. So again, 13-8 your score. Boilermakers leave here at the Great Lakes Center in Aurora. NCAA Collegiate Challenge. Set 10 foot line, Hubner comes for the kill attempt return, Epinesa set back to Epinesa, spike far side, Epinesa kill! This girl is on fire! We'll work on the voice. Okay, no clap, <laughs> Galicia Keys. She's popular oh, these days, I hear. Oh, I know, I know, but but you gotta, you gotta go up another register for that, that that's one. That's true, that's true. 14-8 <laughs> your score, hop serve over. By Neal, spike down far side. Rizzo sends it just a bit far. I tell you, once Rizzo gets that snap down in the middle, she's gonna be a force to reckon with. She did such a great job as an underclassman stepping up in some injury situations two seasons ago for DePaul. Grew more even this year. She's the leader, gonna be a senior this year. Yeah, and everybody except Amon's going to uh, be back, so mm -hmm. expecting big things from Zabernova, everybody. Zabernova, far side, good dig down low. By the Libro, Kramer, bump up, Rooks. Right at the net, Rizzo, and they're calling a tip on that one. 15-9, your they, score. I think they called a net violation oh. on Purdue, so because that uh, was did go a little bit far, and I don't think it was tipped, but uh, the point went to DePaul, and I think the net was contacted. Yeah, thank you for that. So I saw the line judge throw up the tee, so I thought, you know, that's fine. It, they haven't worked together before. They are, <laughs> uh, they are allowed to call different things. Big kill across the middle. Throw that one to Adeleha, 16-9 your score. Purdue's starting to separate themselves, Marsh. Well, they're setting up the middle kills very well with those quick sets right in the middle. And once if you get those spikes set up very nicely and you can time out wherever you want to go, it's killer. Kramer the Libro, sir, is exactly. Set back, Zapranova over the double block. Return cleanly, far side, Epinesa down. Oh, big pick up there by Rooks. Play at the net, and they're gonna say net violation. Uh, Rizzo hit it on the block return. Purdue extends the lead, 17-9. Timeout called on the court by DePaul. We'll be back, sportstownchicago.com and League of Our Own. Bringing you all the pressing
Hi, it's Dave Jude. If you'd love a career in sports, check out the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports or text Chicago Sports to 33239. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting trains you for on-air and behind the scenes in radio, TV, and web with internships, financial aid for those who qualify, and job placement. Start your career in less than a year. Check out exciting sports careers at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports or text Chicago Sports to 33239. With football season finally around the corner. That ain't true! Yes, it is, and that's why you need the Sports Hump for your pigskin fix. Wednesdays from 10 to 1, Rick and Ian... They like playing with each other. Well, that may be true, but they will break down the thoughts of the brightest minds in the game. D- playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. I don't know anything. It's Division One football! It's the Big Twin! And we're back, SportsTimeChicago.com. Pete Ferrari, Brennan Marshall, 17-9 year score. The Boilermakers have the lead. Back set, Zapranova and the Abby Fleener. Some miscommunication there coming out of the timeout, 18-9. Something else to note, though, I mean, you've, you've seen a lot of DePaul games, as have I in my time. You're trying to figure things out. Not every player is here right now for, you know, extraneous reasons, school, vacation, whatever it may be. So, you know, you have some different plays, You're trying some things out. Rizzo across the middle gets the return. Bit of a decoy. Zapranova high off the block, set at the net, finding the angle, and it goes out of bounds. So point goes to the Paul, and finally Purdue makes a self-induced error. Yeah, and uh, DePaul, the big thing about last year that uh, we talked to Coach Nadia Edwards after a lot of games, the big thing with them was just fundamentals, and uh, the fundamentals of knowing who's going to get that kill between Zepernova and Fleener on that side. Just just knowing that's just one of those things that you hope they work on for next year. Double block at the net, set far side, looking for the left-hand kill. Good pick up there by Ford. Rooks to Zapranova over the top. Still alive, doing a good job as Kramer. Left-hand kill attempt, high return by Ford. The Abby Fleener, far side, looking for the kill. Nothing there, decoy in the middle. Epinesa over the tip. Epinesa with the kill. Oh, I want to feel this moment. Christine Aguilar. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I heard it today. I'm like, I might use it. We'll try it out. Just like it's trial and error for them, it's the same for us right now. It's spring volleyball. It is spring volleyball and spring broadcasting where exactly. you know, broadcasting careers begin. Epinesa, far side, has to hit a bit of flat-footed. Hubner, uh, back set there by Ford. And the Abby Fleener gets the point. Just kind of tips it to keep the rally going, and Purdue is already trying to set their offensive attack 19-11. You know, a kill doesn't have to be hard in this game. It can be a soft kill. Absolutely. I've seen that. uh, Used to see that a lot out of Nebraska uh, when I used to watch them back in the uh, the day, as the kids say. But through watching them, it doesn't always have to be, like you said, the hardest kill in the world if it's perfect placement that that, that points a point. And a point there goes to Purdue 20-11, Five points away from set one victory. Yeah, Fleener tried another soft kill there and got called for a lift, so fundamentals again. 2011, your score here on SportsTownChicago.com in a league of our own. Epinesa with a massive jump serve. That one drops down. Zapranova able to get the return. Decoy across the middle. Huber over the double block. Down to one knee goes Purdue. Back row, Epinesa sets over. Return, Hubner. Slide attack by Fleener. Epinesa underneath that one clearly. And at the net... Massive kill right across the middle. Randy Leith, 2012, with the lethal kill. Yeah, that'll be a new addition this year. She's a red shirt. She's a red shirt freshman, and she's been playing a lot in this game. So I guess the coach uh, Edwards trying to see what she has. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of which, one of the uh, wily veterans of the team joining uh, things now is Anastasia Shitava, right only, across the middle. Only player on DePaul taller than me. There you go. Hey, that's there's something to be said for that. Oh, on the slide, slide, slippity slide, Kiara Jones, 21 to 12. I'd say Kiara Jones has uh, been the MVP of set one, though. She, uh, we don't have official stats, but she's got a lot of kills. No, oh, yeah, yes, she does. Yes, yes, she does. Back to serve now is the aforementioned Jones. Bounces a few times. Again, 21-12, Purdue leads here at the Collegiate Challenge. Slide attack over and not able to get there in time is going to be Leith 22-12. Purdue leads by 10. 
substitution coming into the game now is going to be number 19, Bridget Powell from the hometown, Mother Macaulay, Mighty Max. One of the serve specialists in high school does the same here for the Boilermakers. Left hand over the net. It's always good to find a lefty. Leith on the slide, double block, and tips on the far side of the antenna. You can't do that. 23-12, Purdue leads two you're points away from you lefty, Pete? I am a lefty. All right, so we have the all-lefty broadcast group. We and, do. And Labosco on the other end is also a it lefty. It is. So. We're taking over one broadcast at a time. <laughs> set to Hubner. She goes down on an angle. Powell underneath it. Good back set. Spike down. That one goes out of bounds. Good communication there by DePaul. That's one thing when DePaul communicates, rank right up there with the best of them, sometimes communication slips here and there, and I know that's one thing that they really try to work on in these spring games. Back to serve is Hubner. Bit of a knuckleball, drops it right down, slide attack, block over the middle. Zapranova with the block. Cause it's like you're my mirror staring back at me. I don't know how to follow that one up. Justin Timberlake reference. Always good in a lovely Saturday morning. 23-14. I guess so. Woke it's trial up. and error for these things. Trial and error. <laughs> Set up. Far side goes Davis for Epinesa. Good return. Double block for Zapranova. Set far side. Zapranova tries to tip left hand. She keeps the rally going. And Jones, uh, excuse me, Adeleha with the kill. 24-14, and we're at set one point. Yeah, the thing about this Purdue Boilermaker team, they have a lot of freshmen, so they're looking pretty good so far, and they got a bright future if they continue playing like this. The power of recruiting, as you can see it right here. And Shatava gets blocked on the far side. No, thank you, come again. 25-14 is the way set one is going to end. Can DePaul bounce back in set two, or will Purdue run it in two straight? We'll find out in just a few here on SportstownChicago.com, where we are in a league of our own. SportstownChicago.com is now bringing you behind the scenes with contestants from NBC's The Biggest Loser. Holy cow! Check out SportstownChicago.com slash Biggest Loser to download exclusive interviews with past contestants and winners. Why are we so blessed? Listen as they talk dieting, sports, hobbies, and life after The Biggest Loser. So log on to SportstownChicago.com slash Biggest Loser now. God bless the internet. SportstownChicago.com in a league of our own. SportstownChicago.com brings you the inside information and winning strategies from the top coaches in the state of Illinois for high school sports in their web video series, The Coach's Corner. Hear about how the coaches and players of the elite teams in the state practice in the offseason, stories that inspire them to achieve, pregame rituals, superstitions, and much more. Find out how the best of the best are the best with the Sportstown Chicago Coach's Corner. Only on SportstownChicago.com in a league of our own. SportstownChicago.com is the internet sports station that is located at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, Illinois. We offer you a chance, or should I say an opportunity, to become an on-air personality, get invited to live sporting events, and we teach you how to interact with your listeners. Get the training you need to get in the broadcasting industry. Just go to SportstownChicago.com or dial 630 916-1700. You love sports, you have drive and determination, but you need skills to work in sports broadcasting. Hey, this is Tom Waddle, and I'm here to tell you how to get those skills at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Get hands-on training for a career in radio, TV, or digital media. Learn to be a host, producer, or shoot and edit video. With internships, day and night classes, affordable tuition, and job placement assistance, you could start a new career in less than a year at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports to put the ball in play. That's beyond air.com slash Chicago Sports. Oh yeah, DJ. 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 And welcome back to SportstownChicago.com. My name is Brendan Marshall. I am alongside the doctor, Pete Ferreira. And uh, we're about a minute away from set number two in this this morning it will be three sets no matter what. So even if DePaul loses set two, they will play a set three, even though DePaul doesn't have it. It's kind of like a practice game, I guess, Pete. It is, but you, you still know who wins because there's still th two out of three have to be won. So either way, with that being said, 
Uh, somebody's got to win, and the the way this round robin is working, and there's two pools going on right now, Michigan State and Bradley are having it out on court number three. Whoever comes out victorious with the most wins or most points sets one out of those given three plays for the championship this afternoon. So Purdue will set out, start out with the serve. Amanda Neal, their defensive specialist freshman, will serve it, and Epinesa will start off this set on the bench for the Purdue Boilermakers. So going with a little bit of different lineup, we'll update you as it goes along. Serve will be over, fielded by Zapranova. Hubner and now Zapranova will get it over on the spike, but it's controlled by Neal, and then a spike across is over by Rybarczyk. DePaul keeps it alive though. Fle the Abby Fleener will send it back over. Now a spike and another hit over by Rybarczyk. And now DePaul keeping it alive. Zapranova will be roofed by both Valerie Nicole and Faye Adelaja at the front line for a Purdue point. Yeah, that's one thing right now that you got to put into account. DePaul got a little bit of speed advantage right now, but height definitely goes to Purdue. Zapranova got the dig on the barrel roll and then hit, got the third hit over. Now a big third hit by Annie Drews back for turn for Purdue, but DePaul will send it back over. Now Adelaja with a middle spike and she will get a kill off the hands of DePaul. Two nothing Boilermakers. Good play right there for Purdue trying to get that early advantage. You just take it all the way and get two straight and kind of see what happens in the third one. You know, you, you'd like to see that here. You don't want to wear yourself out. It's an all day tournament. It, unlike a best of five that you may have in a day, you're, you're playing all day. And these girls probably are used to playing all day. That's true. Annie Drews gets the spike over, but DePaul will keep it alive, and Fleener will send it back to the Purdue side. Boilermakers keep it alive. Big spike and a little bit too big by Katherine Rabarczyk, the outside hitter for Purdue. So DePaul will get the point, and Zapranova will, on the near side, serve. Something to note, too, Marsh, is uh, Zapranova right now wearing a knee brace on her left knee. So, oh, <laughs> and hinders she, her not. <laughs> she gets a big ace as it contacts the back line. A perfect serve because that one cannot be defended. Wow. I was just going to say, I wonder if that's hindering her at all, and she proves me wrong. <laughs> Zapranova with the high ball serve. Oh. Another fastball. This one's just a little bit too hard, so point to Purdue on the service error. But, yeah, Zapranova... Actually, one of the late games of the year injured that knee a little bit, and uh, she had surgery when she was at Auburn and redshirted her first year. So, may not be fully, but uh, she's out there playing, giving it her all. Serve over by the libero, Carly Kramer. Return by DePaul, Natalie Rizzo on a good quick set by Aubrey Horde. Getting a big kill there, Pete. And that's what you like to see, Marsh, is, you know, Rizzo's got to be that leader this year. Allman is gone. She was that sole senior that held and was the glue of the team. Rizzo's got to step up into that role now. Rizzo now will serve it. She'll get it over. Cross court set and a spike by Rabarczyk is double blocked. And DePaul will get the point there. So good job at the front line by Fleener and Randy Leith to get that double block and get the point. Beautiful play there, DePaul. Now they're starting to click. Again, coach is looking for a rotation that works, and this may be it right now. Rizzo gets the serve over. Quick set there, and a little dump over, and a lift's going to be called on Rabarczyk as the set uh, really didn't set up anybody, so Rabarczyk had to hustle after that one, and error for the Boilermakers, and one of their few so far this morning. Something else to note is how Graham is usually the libero for DePaul. Uh, they're not even playing with one right now. So, and she is uh, on the sideline. So when you're, when you're quarterback, as we like to say, of the team, the libero is not in there. It makes a difference on the offensive attack. Hubner got a good block there. And then another one as the spike by Drews went right into the net. So DePaul with four straight points here, got a rally going, but uh, yeah, Rooks, um, Rooks has been the libero also this season, mm -hmm. and she's on the bench right now, so playing without one. Almost a lift called there. Yeah, it's a Woo! good dig there, and a big spike by Rabarczyk, and Rizzo could not dig that one out. So 6-4 DePaul still with the lead, but Purdue now will get the point, and Rachel Davis, their junior setter, We'll go back and serve. Had a good time talking to Rachel Davis yesterday. Again, that podcast can be found on sportsonchicago.com slash collegiate challenge. 
Randy Leaf will get it over on the back set by Horde, but Purdue will keep it alive. Big spike by Valerie Nicole, but good dig by Zapranova. Horde, and now Hubner will get it over with a spike. Good set to front side, and then Rabarczyk able to get it over, and it was tipped by DePaul, but Hubner in a diving effort could not keep it alive, so two straight points for the Boilermakers. DePaul's lead's cut to 6-5. And Kelly Hubner, one of our 2011 Illinois State All-Stars. Again, that can be found at sportsonchicago.com slash ASG. 2011, but you like to see the growth. We'll talk about that in a minute. And Hubner, speaking of which, gets the spike over, kept alive by Purdue. Good dig by Neal. And then a cross court spike will be out of bounds by Rabarchik. So actually, they'll give Purdue the point okay, there yeah. as uh, it contacted the line. So tied at six. I was just going to say, you know, All Star Games existed three years now, Marshall, and seeing some players here today that were in the first year game let alone uh, the past two years. So it's always good to see how you know these players develop and from the high school level on to playing big time here. DePaul kept it alive, but Purdue will get it back over. And uh, DePaul, apparently, I thought that contacted the floor, but uh, that kept it alive and the rally continues. Purdue, it's on Purdue's side now. Big spike and a kill for Valerie Nicole across on the back line by a diving Zapranova. Yeah, it's, you know what's interesting too is DePaul, they're part of the new quote, you know, quote unquote Catholic Seven, or the new Big East, or the new AAC as they're calling it. All, all these names, Marsh, and you know, they're <laughs> going to have to make some adjustments. You know, there's all, all new teams coming their way. Fleener gets the spike over, and then Epinosa, or excuse me, uh, Rabarchik will return it. Hubner with the second hit from out of bounds gets it to Leith in the middle, and Leith with a big kill there, hitting the perfect spot on the back line, right side. Very good play there. You know you like to see, too, if you're DePaul, 25-14. You lost by 11 in the set in first set. You kept it close early on, but you like to see what we're seeing now. You're starting the second set, blow for blow. Yeah, maybe just needed a warm-up set. Laura Witt came into the game along with Shitava. Witt will serve it. She gets it over, and a soft kill by Rabarczyk as she just taps it over the net, over the front line, and gets the point for her team. Yeah, Witt uh, just checking into the game. Hasn't didn't see much action in set one. But again, coach trying to see what's uh, what's going on. What what the Blue Demons have. Serve uh, going to be over by Workman. Kate Workman now serving, and returned by DePaul. But Hubner spike uh, hits contacts the antenna. So Purdue point. They are up nine seven. Kate Workman, the defensive specialist freshman, one of the many freshmen one two three four five six seven freshmen yeah one of them's a red shirt but uh freshmen all the same for purdue shutava will get the spike but it's double blocked at the line kiera jones with the block jones gets it back hubner gets a block there and now a big spike uh, by valerie nicole and a kill as it mm -hmm. contacted the depaul front line and went out of bounds so three straight points for purdue and this is one of those moments pete where yeah. you'd like to see him respond well, you know, it's interesting, too. You talked about the amount of freshmen on the team, Marsh. You also have to look at if one of these teams didn't show up today, Purdue can field two teams if they wanted. They have enough players on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> that they do. A lot of them are just standing there, and Epinesa has not gotten into the action. Big kill there by, I believe that was Callie Hubner. So point for DePaul. They are down 10-8 and a good response. No, exactly, and that's what they needed right away, like you said. If that would have hit 11-7, you wouldn't have needed a timeout. Momentum would have gone by the wayside. Now it's only a two-point difference. Nadia Edwards is sitting on the bench for one of the rare times in this game so far. Back set, and Kira Jones spikes it over, but good dig by Rooks. And now Hubner will get it over, but Jones returns it on a roof. DePaul able to keep it alive. Witt, and it'll be more than three hits as Witt on the third hit. Diving effort could not get it over. So 11-8, great hustle, but just disorganized. Yeah, good play by Witt there, though. Just, uh, again, hustle points. You always, it's like fantasy sports. It's like point poor reception. Do you get point, you know, do you get a partial point for a good dig? Should, but you know, don't. <laughs> fantasy volleyball one day, folks. It'll Hub exist. Hubner with a dig and a spike, but Purdue able to keep it alive. And the kill attempt by Katie Griffin will be blocked at the front line by Shutava and a roof by Anastasia. I think that's how you say her name. Anastasia. I'll just call her Shutava. The Belarus blocker strikes again. 11-9 the score, and now Rooks will serve it. Cross court, returned by Purdue, and a big spike by Faye Adelaja. Good slide there by Purdue, and she just 
cross court spiked it right into the middle, right at the feet of the back line. Yeah, lead extended back to three. If you're DePaul, you got to watch yourself. You, you can't, you know, you can't let it slip away now. You got to try to get back. Zafranova with the dig, and she will get a spike over, but it's kept alive by Purdue. Good dig by Workman. DePaul will get it back over, and now Purdue with the return. Rooks for a set for Shutava. She sets it over. Purdue able to keep it alive, and getting it over will be Griffin on a spike. Kept alive. Witt setting up Hubner in the middle. She gets it over. Purdue keeps it alive. Cross-court set, and Griffin again. Good dig by Witt on a set. And DePaul will be able to get it over there. Good rally going. Now a spike on the left side. Powell, excuse me, Drews gets it over. DePaul keeps it alive. Shutava double blocked. DePaul still alive. Hubner, Witt, and now a mi quick middle set to Natalie Rizzo. And DePaul wins a big rally there as Rizzo finds the perfect spot in the back left corner. MVP of that rally goes to Laura Witt with a massive dig along our right side view of the antenna, keeping that rally going. She flopped on that one, hit the ground hard, but without that, rally ends and uh, Purdue gets the point. You'd like to win those rallies because they are momentum. Mm -hmm. Purdue now, big spike by Drews, but it's good block by the double bubble block and DePaul will keep it alive. Hubner, that one looked like it contacted the line. It did. Callie Hubner with a great spike on the left sideline and she gets a kill. And that's something to note about a team like DePaul. They, they have a mix of, you know, senior leaders down to a lot of sophomores and some good incoming freshmen. They're a developing team. They're trying to find each other out. But one, one thing that they have raw talent. Once that gets harnessed, watch out for them in the new AAC. Griffin will get it over on the spike. Looked like a lift, but not called. And then Fleener, it was tipped at the line, so Fleener will get a kill despite her spike going out of bounds. Tied at 12. You talked about the momentum of the long rally point, Marsh, and this is coming to fruition right here as they're tied at 12. Well, the rallies do get the crowds going once they get going back and forth, so you'd like to win those because they are momentum. And Faye Adelaja could not quite get it over the net for Purdue, so DePaul will get the point, and they take the lead 13-12, and Aubrey Horde's got a rally going. And there's that double hit, and you know something else to note is Purdue can't – because they're not getting the points right now, they can't get a rotation that's, that can defend what DePaul's throwing on the attack right now. Drew's spike is blocked, but DePaul will be keeping it alive. And Zapranova is roofed at the line. Good double block by Annie Drews and Faye Adelaja. So we are tied now at lucky 13. Yeah, you know, it's better to be, um, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I was gonna say better than being tied at, at 25, but no, that doesn't work either. I was just trying to go okay, against okay. the unluckiness. All right, all right, I see you. Zapranova with the spike there. There's our luckiness. Number 13 with a big kill there, and Zapranova will now go back and serve. The Bulgarian bomber with the kill. With the Z-bomb. The Z-bomb, I like that. I used it this year. Marcus liked it too, but he never used it, so I'll just take it my own. Take, make, take, we don't care about Marcus. It's all right. <laughs> Abby, the Abby Fleener with yeah. a spike there and a kill. So she's she's earning her the befo yeah. title before her name with that one. You know what? It, it's good to see. You got to have a little bit of personality. You got to have people, you know, teammates that you're comfortable enough to have nicknames or be confident enough to say the Abby Fleener. You know, sometimes it gets too stoic in the collegiate ranks, and you got to remember you still got to have fun. Annie Drews with a cross-court left-handed spike a little bit too far and out of bounds, so DePaul with a 16-13 lead here. But yeah, Abby Fleener, I've noticed in pregame this season, she's mm. the one that's usually dancing to the music, you know, clapping up her teammates, going, DePaul! Yeah, yeah. So, you know, her and Zapranova, I think, are the emotional leaders of the team, and yeah, as you say, you gotta have that. Zapranova will get it over, return spike and a kill by Katherine Rybarczyk, the outside hitting junior for Purdue and 16-14 DePaul's leads cut to two. Well, even in the interview yesterday with the Abby Fleener, she even mentioned how, you know, sometimes she pushes the boundaries of what she can get away with for a, a good laugh and practice, but she knows that coach appreciates the sense of humor. It keeps things lighthearted. And uh, serve over by Kramer, returned by DePaul, and at the Abby Fleener, I, I gotta remember that the, there's a title before her name now, <laughs> but she gets another kill and 17-14. The Fleen. 
the Abby Flynn. Natalie Rizzo now will get it over on the serve. Good take at the back line and a quick set to the middle. Spike over by Kiera Jones and she will get the point as it goes off to Paul. 17-15, lead is cut to two and definitely better set two for the Blue Demons. They did not get to anywhere near 17 in set one. No, they've already gotten three more so count that as a moral victory uh, and things are just going more their way. The Abby Fleener had a spike over but good dig at the back line on a set by Amanda Neal and now Hubner will get it over on a little dump, but uh, Neal will send it back over to the back line, Zapranova, and looks like, uh, what's that, a net violation on Purdue? Yeah, and it looks like uh, Valerie Nickel is going to have to uh, take a quick moment uh, substitution. We're going to take a timeout with them right here, sportstownchicago.com in a league of our own. Join the Slaughter broadcast team. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports for more information. That's beonair.com slash Chicago Sports. Welcome to your new home for the Chicago Slaughter. SportstownChicago.com in a league of our own. If you're a Slaughter fan, then stay tuned all season for all home games broadcast live on SportstownChicago.com. Also hear the replay of all the home games by going to SportstownChicago.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only here can you download the free podcasts of all games. Fellas, I can't wait till the toe hits the leather. You can all and back here for set number two, Laura Witt will serve it over and... It is returned on a big spike by Kira Jones, and it will go off of Leith at the front line for a Purdue point, as Purdue, the first time out of the game, Valerie Nickel, not quite as gruesome inju an injury as Louisville, but um, she no. got contacted on the shoulder by the spiker, and the neck kind of didn't do what you wanted to do, so we hope she is okay, and we hope that maybe she can be back today, but Valerie Nicole, the sophomore outside hitter for Purdue, is being looked at at the sidelines. Witt now and Hubner will get it over. Good dig by Davis. And now sending it over will be Drews, or excuse me, Griffin. But DePaul keeps it alive. Shutava sends it back to the Purdue side. And now a big spike by Epinesa seeing her first action of set two. Gets it over, but Witt well, will get it over the set. And Kiara Jones with a big middle spike getting the point for her team. And 18-17 now. Kate Workman will try to tie it as she serves it for the Boilermakers. You know, one thing to note, too, we are talking about the recruiting. I will get to this in a minute, some recruiting power of DePaul. And Zapranova with a good barrel roll on the second hit out of bounds. Keeps the play alive, and DePaul will get it over, but Kiera Jones right there. Good setup by Davis right in the middle. Quick set, and Jones with a big spike and a kill. 18 all. I was just saying, not only did Paul right now doing a good job in these recent years, of getting some great incoming local talent, but also you get a player like Zappernova from Auburn, you get a player like Witt from UTSA, you know, developing team, as we like to say. Yep, developing program too, and that's what Coach Nadia Edwards wants. A block at the front line will give the point to Purdue as the block by DePaul went out of bounds. And nobody else would you want to start a program like Nadia Edwards. Penn State champion herself, coach at Ohio State, now getting her chance to rejuvenize, uh, revitalize the DePaul program. I mean, you want to talk about perfect pedigree for something like that, she's got it. Callie Hubner uh, winded up and threw a fastball right into the Purdue bench, or excuse me, hit a fastball more or less would be the more accurate statement, and it went out of bounds. So DePaul has given up five straight points, and they are in a timeout as it looks like Zapranova's the emotional leader trying to keep that team pumped up and going, and that's... As you say, that's what you need, and this is a big moment for DePaul as they got to try to respond to this rally. All right, we'll be back just a second. SportsOnChicago.com. This is madness. Two buzzer beaters in the semifinals. White and five foot six. The regular season really means nothing. Are they America East or what's their? Big South. I hate Cody Zeller. I think he's looking at these guys like kind of like Izzo's looking at Michigan State. The number 16 in the nation, the number five seed in the Big Ten tournament. A team like Illinois might have to play someone just to get into the tournament. Ohio State kind of gets lost in the scheme of things. One of the 12 seeds be playing in Dayton. I think it's going to be Kentucky. Who's going to win it? DC, DC. Michigan State. Do yeah. Harvard. Liberty. Ohio State. Akron. Iowa, Michigan. Minnesota. Butler. Izzo. Are you getting really? the madness? Yes, yes. Julian Shvari, SportsHubChicago.com.
And back here on SportstownChicago.com, Purdue will try to keep their rally going as Workman serves it over. Rooks with a back line dig, and then Hubner will get it over on a middle spike. Purdue keeps it alive. Epinesa, they look like it almost contacted the antenna, but Epinesa will get the kill and the point there. So six straight points for the Boilermakers. They are up 21-18 as, you know, that rally really started, Pete, when Epinesa came back into the game. And so... Yeah. Big serve by Workman, and it will go over the court, so service error and point for DePaul. Big one there, and unforced error for Purdue. You can't do that when you have the momentum going. Sure. Quick shout-out, too, to Epi Epinesa, uh, Sam's dad, uh, was uh, Facebook messaging to all of uh, people out in Purdue world to make sure they tune into the broadcast today. So thank you for that, and good luck to your son playing in a basketball tournament today. Epinesa got roof though on the double block on that one, so good job by the front line. Shutava and Leaf getting a point for DePaul. It is now 21-20. Hubner will get it over now. And a back set and a spike by Kira Jones. Kept alive. Good dig by Rooks. DePaul keep, or excuse me, Purdue keeps it alive, and this time Kira Jones gets the kill right past the back line. Callie Hubner diving to her right. You know, that's just great communication there, Marsh. They saw that two of the bigs for DePaul were taking two thirds of the back corner of the court, made the proper adjustment, and there you have it. So Kiara Jones now in the from the middle of the court will serve it. Her team up 22-20, and she serves it right into the net. So another service error for the Boilermakers, and they're giving DePaul a chance. Well, and that's all you want is you want a chance. And DePaul finding that rotation right now, head coach Edwards, assistant coach Fong Long, doing the adjustments to uh, get where you need to go. Rooks with the serve. She'll try to tie it. Little set, and Epinesa will get it over on the spike. Good dig by Witt. Rooks, and now Shutava will get it over. And the set hit the wall as the libera Carly Kramer tried to dig one out and could not. So tied at 22. And DePaul now with a chance to lead, and Allie Rooks, one of those seniors, gets it over on the serve. Front set and a dive effort, and that looked like more than four hit or three hits, and finally DePaul will get the point. Took a minute there. Yeah, I'm like, okay, one, two, three. It was like the count, one, two, three, four, five, five hits, ah, ah, ah. I like that, that was good. That Sesame was good. Street, can never let it die. That's right. Allie Rooks will get the serve over, her team up one. Big spike on a good back set by Faye Adelaja, and she hit it on the perfect spot on the back line where no blue demon was. Like I said, once you get a person in a position that, that they're known for, and for her, it's that slide attack from that far side, watch out, and like right now, Powell checking in to be a defensive specialist. It's, it's easier when you got a team like Purdue, when you talk about such depth on the roster, you can have specialists. DePaul, you gotta be able to do everything. Powell, the serving specialist now, will try to win the game for her team on the last two points. Zapranova with a big spike, but good dig by the libero Kramer. And now a roof by Shutava and Rizzo for a DePaul point, 24-23, set point. Shutava says no. How do you say no in, I don't even know what they speak in Belarus. Uh, Belarusian, I don't know. And you know what, I shame on me for not knowing. Usually yeah, when, same, you, same. Usually they're, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do some Google Translate. Uh, we'll do and, that during the break. <laughs> Aubrey Horde came into the game to serve. She gets it over and a roof again by Zapranova and Rizzo. Set point, we'll go to set three. DePaul wins this one, 25-23. We'll be back in a few minutes here on SportstownChicago.com. Hi, it's Dave Jude. If you'd love a career in sports, check out the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports or text Chicago Sports to 33239. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting trains you for on-air and behind the scenes in radio, TV, and web with internships, financial aid for those who qualify, and job placement. Start your career in less than a year. Check out exciting sports careers at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports or text Chicago Sports to 33239. With football season finally around the corner. That ain't true! Yes, it is, and that's why you need the sports hump for your pigskin fix. Wednesdays from 10 to 1, Rick and Ian... They like playing with each other. Well, that may be true, but they will break down the thoughts of the brightest minds in the game. D playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. I don't know anything. It's Division One football! It's the Big 12! 
cannot play with him, cannot win with him, cannot coach with him, can't do it. Go off any uh, uh, of our geniusness. So tune in to the Sports Hub Wednesdays from 10 to 1 on SportstownChicago.com. SportstownChicago.com is the internet sports station that is located at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, Illinois. We offer you a chance, or should I say, an opportunity to become an on-air personality, get invited to live sporting events, and we teach you how to interact with your listeners, get the training you need to get in the broadcasting industry. Just go to SportstownChicago.com or dial 630-916-1700. SportstownChicago.com, the only place where you can talk Pokemon with the Pokemaster. Bringing you all the pressing topics brought to you by SportstownChicago.com. SportstownChicago.com is now bringing you behind the scenes with contestants from NBC's The Biggest Loser. Holy cow! Check out SportstownChicago.com slash Biggest Loser to download exclusive interviews with past contestants and winners. Why are we so blessed? Listen as they talk dieting, sports, hobbies, and life after The Biggest Loser. So log on to SportstownChicago.com slash Biggest Loser now. God bless the internet. SportstownChicago.com in a league of our own. SportstownChicago.com brings you the inside information and winning strategies from the top coaches in the state of Illinois for high school sports in their web video series, The Coach's Corner. Hear about how the coaches and players of the elite teams in the state practice in the offseason, stories that inspire them to achieve, pregame rituals, superstitions, and much more. Find out how the best of the best are the best with the Sportstown Chicago Coach's Corner. Only on SportstownChicago.com. Com in a league of our own. SportstownChicago.com is the internet sports station that is located at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, Illinois. We offer you a chance, or should I say, an opportunity to become an on-air personality, get invited to live sporting events, and we teach you how to interact with your listeners, get the training you need to get in the broadcasting industry. Just go to SportstownChicago.com or dial 630 630- 916, 1700. You love school. JC, Billy, Joey. And back here on SportstownChicago.com, my name is Brendan Marshall. I do play for the Bears. I'm <laughs> alongside Dr. Pete Ferreira. We are at the start of set number three and Aubrey Horde with the first serve for DePaul, but Purdue will get the first point as Annie Davis with a left-handed kill there. one nothing. Boilermakers, and now Carly Kramer, their libero, will go back and serve. Kramer will get a line drive over. Good dig by Zapranova. Horde, and now Zapranova from out of bounds will spike it over. Kept alive by Purdue. Back set and a net violation on the Boilermakers. Point two, DePaul. So tied at one, and Vesela Zapranova will go back and serve. Yeah, what's going to be interesting to see with this is who wants it more, who's willing to make those dives, put that extra effort, because there's still some bragging rights. You know, you're, this is still college level. This isn't just a pickup game amongst friends. Yeah, and this is also the first game of a long day. So we'll see how much effort they give try, maybe trying to save something or just put it all on the line there DePaul will play in the next game whereas Purdue will get a break so yeah. we'll see how that goes Annie Drew's got another big left-handed kill off the finger off the hands of Hubner so 2-1 Purdue with the lead and now Workman will serve it to the back line Rooks with the big spike in the middle off a quick set by Aubrey Horde and she gets a kill tied at two yeah, it's really good to see the, the chemistry DePaul has shown. One thing, and, and I know you can attest to this, Marsh, is the closing power wasn't necessarily there all the time. That killer instinct at the end of games, they would be up two sets, be up one nothing, and then would end up losing in five. Seeing this power, this staying power here in the third set is a good thing to see for Blue Demon fans. A kill by Kira Jones of Purdue as Zapranova with a bad dig. So three to two, Purdue, as we go back and forth here in set number three. All of the morning games will be 
three sets no matter what. So even if DePaul hadn't won the last set, it, they would have played a third one. Yeah, if this tournament was uh, a full five, uh, it would be uh, kind of a long day. Kind of, and especially for the players. The Abby Fleener with a big spike and kill off the fingertips of the front line of Katie Griffin and Faye, or excuse me, Kira Jones. So the Abby Fleener strikes mm -hmm. again. Well, one thing to note too is if you look at all the sophomores right now on the Blue Demon team that are making such an impact from Fleener to Hoard to Hubner, all of them just impact players at an early age. Witt will serve it over, Kira Jones, and then a oh. good little over-the-head delivery by Rachel, Rachel Davis. Rachel Davis, Davis left-hand dump. Flush it. Four to three the score. I couldn't have added any more, but uh, the, if you're talking about sophomores, Tyler Graham got lots of playing time Speaking at the of end flushing, of last year. I was so upset I was on uh, vacation there. That was not, oh, okay, thought it was a double hit, no call, sorry. <laughs> Purdue keeps it going as uh, Elijah was waiting for the end of that story. Elijah will get it over to Paul on the return. Now it's Griffin, double block. Excuse me, it was just Randy Leith that got the roof there, but roof all the same, tied at four. I want to say, uh, the, the toilet in the hotel, you'd flush it and sometimes it would stick at the bottom, so then you'd get the running water sound. It, I, I, that annoyed me. You're a hotel, fix it. Yeah, well, it, also it's your wedding suite, right? No comment. No comments. All right. <laughs> so that should be well. That should be better, exactly. than, I don't better want... than a normal hotel. I was just, yeah. That was, that was my point. Well, anyway. what, wedding suite was the uh, wedding weekend, but on honeymoon it was just a regular old uh, hotel room. We didn't spend much time in the hotel. You want to be out and about. You want to be sitting on a beach. That's right. In cold weather. That's right. Purdue got the last point as Kara Jones with another kill there. Now DePaul trying to respond and the. Battle at the Nets, won by Purdue as Adelaja getting the point for a team, and now 6-4 as the back and forth stalls. It was funny, uh, one of my old friends who actually played uh, college soccer at Creighton and played uh, professional women's soccer, uh, she actually wrote on uh, the Facebook, which is a popular thing, she put, oh, uh, the world mourns, Pete Ferreri is uh, off the market. I said, yeah, they mourn with tears of joy. I can stop bothering people. Well, well, we'll ask the DePaul players how they feel about that after the game. <laughs> Point for DePaul there as um, the uh, Zapranova got a kill there. So now Rooks will go back and serve, looking to tie the game at six. Trying to uh, regain my train of thought here. Big spike over by Hillary Fox, who is seeing her first action for Purdue. And she spiked it a little bit too hard. So DePaul will get the point, tied at six. Where's Marcus when you need him to talk about some Hawks games? <laughs> Rooks or DePaul volleyball players. That's true. <laughs> and Hawks games. Purdue will get it back over and a big spike by Katie Griffin for a kill. 7-6, Boilermakers with the lead. I won't bother Marcus about that on the broadcast. No, that's fine. <laughs> Bit of a and slow pace here in the third. Yeah, well, back and forth they have gone and DePaul after trailing 6-4 has Rally to tie it. Now Purdue will get the point. DePaul has not led yet in set three. Zapranova with a dig and a spike. Good effort diving dig by Carly Kramer on a barrel roll. Purdue will get it back over. Now Witt with a cross court set to Zapranova, but Witt with a little bit oh. of a, what they call a lift. No, they, uh, I, I believe they said went under the, one of the DePaul players went under the net. That would have been a beautiful kill though. Yeah, definitely. But, it was, uh, it, that was set up by a great decoy and that's what makes a difference. And now the serve by Amanda Neal of Purdue goes over the court, so DePaul will get the point there. Blue Demons trail 8-7, to seven, as now the tag team of Horton Fleener will come in for the tag team of Witt and Shutava. Tag team back again. <laughs> and Aubrey Horde came into the game to serve. She is a setter, but also a pretty good server as she places it nicely at the front line on a little bit of an arc, but Purdue will send it back over. Good, kill, good job by Drews to get it back. And now DePaul, Purdue will get the point. I believe a lift was called on DePaul, am I correct? Yes, you are correct, sir. So again, right now DePaul had the momentum coming out of the second set, but right now shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, fundamentals like um, Edwards said during the season, a uh, lift there and a player going on the other side of the court and then Rizzo with a spike attempt, but she is rooked by Kiara Jones. 10-7, Purdue with the lead. 
Carly Kramer will try to keep the rally going. She is the libero and defensive specialist. She is a junior, a redshirt junior. It must be interesting to see too what the DePaul team is moving in the future. If, you know, who is going to step up and be that libero? Is it going to be Rooks? She's graduating soon. Who's going to step up next? Are they recruiting somebody right now? You know, it, it's a fun part of college sports is who's going to be next. Time out on the court. We'll take it with them right here at SportsSoundChicago.com and leave our own. Hey, friends, this is Tom Waddle. You may know me as good old number 87 or as the better half of the Waddle and Sylvie show. People often ask me, hey, Tom, how could you be so slow and make it in football? Well, I ignore that question, and then they ask, Tom, how can I be on radio and TV like you? I tell them it takes drive and determination, and you need to learn how it all works. At the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, you can do just that. ICB is enrolling students for day and evening classes right now. You can learn how to be a sports talk show host, a producer, do play-by-play -play or shoot and edit video. Plus, you'll have a chance to get internships where you can tap into the knowledge of industry pros. They have affordable tuition and financial aid for those who qualify. And with job placement assistance, you can start your new career in less than a year. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports. See what the Illinois Center for Broadcasting has to offer. Carly Kramer with the serve to try to get her team another point and a net battle going to be won by DePaul as a net violation is going to be called on the Boilermakers. So DePaul with a big point there off their timeout and they trail 11-8 and Vesela Zapranovo will come back and go back and serve. I wanted to talk about the libero for next yeah. year. At the end of the year, Tyler Graham was the libero mm -hmm. for the DePaul Blue Demons. She's only a sophomore, so I would think that would be the future. Yeah. Big spike by Annie Drews, and Zapranova unable to dig that one out despite a double barrel roll. Yeah. So 12 8 Purdue with the lead. Well, you never know. Uh, Coach Edward has up her sleeve. I mean, like I said, uh, Henesis Reyes came into this team as Blue Demon as an outside hitter and has found most of her collegiate career being in the back row. So. You know, switches happen, uh, but that's what good coaching can do. Good job by Kelly Hubner to block Kiera Jones right at the net, right at the right antenna, and get the point for the Blue Demons. 12-9 the score, and Natalie Rizzo now will go back and serve. That's interesting. I didn't know uh, Reyes had come in as an outside hitter, but that's the thing about DePaul is you got to be able to just, as, it, as you mm -hmm. say, play a lot of positions. Yeah. Well, you know, that was uh, during my lovely interview with Henesis in Espanol. Uh, go to our sister station, ChicagolandSportsRadio.com, the podcast section to hear that one. In Spanish, whole thing, whole thing in Spanish. Very nice. Anyway, uh, service error by Natalie Rizzo, so Purdue gets the point there, but the Abby Fleener will send back a Purdue serve, and now Purdue will send it now to the DePaul end. Back set to the Abby Fleener, and a big spike by the Abby Fleener. We need T-shirts. That's at the front, it's just the, and on the back, Abby Fleener. <laughs> I think we can make that happen. I'll talk to Coach Edwards after the game. We'll, I'll, I'll, I'll go talk to Mr. Chambosco, the assistant athletic director, and say, hey, we need the Abby Fleener t-shirts. The Abby Fleener. I, yeah, exactly. With, with, and somehow with like a tilde or an accent in there. One of those weird symbols if you hit like the control alt sign or something. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Witt will get a serve contact in the net, but gets it over. Purdue returns it, and then Callie Hubner. S Spike was just a little bit too far cross court as she hit it out of bounds. 14 10, Purdue will take the lead. And Kiara Jones, who has had a major impact on this match, mm -hmm. will go back and serve as DePaul on a 4 2 set. Four in the back line looking to dig this one out. Hubner does. Witt, cross court set to Shutava. She gets it over. Purdue keeps it alive. Good dig by Fox. And now big spike by Griffin, but good block by Leith. Purdue still alive, and Fox will get it over. Good dive by Rooks. Leith with a spike gets it over. Purdue returns. Rachel Davis. And she will get a point for her team on a good little dump. Yeah. You know, one thing to point out, though, on that play for on the DePaul side, you know, one thing I like about watching Leith so far, I didn't get, we didn't get to see her last year, but one That's thing right. about looking at her this year, good fu sound fundamental stance and approach. She, her footwork, it's never out of position, and that's one thing that you can always build on. Hubner will get it over on the third hit on the serve. 15-10 Purdue with the lead. Cross-court set, and Workman 
little bit too far on the cross court spike as she hit it out of bounds into the DePaul bench. So Point Blue Demons, they are down 15-11 and Callie Hubner will go back and serve. Yeah, Kate Griffin uh, putting a little too much behind that one. Ding dong, Avon was not calling. Hubner will get it over. Griffin will try again. This time a soft little <laughs> dump over the front line right into the middle open area. And a soft kill for Katie Griffin, 16-11. Well, she, she must have heard us saying, uh, you know, making a comment about her being from Avon, Illinois. I get it now. <laughs> Rachel Davis with the serve. She gets it over. Witt with a cross-court set to Zapranova. She gets it through the double block of Adelaja and Drews and gets us kill for her team, 16-12. Uh, game one ended between Bradley and Michigan State. We'll get that final for you in just a moment. 16-12 here on court six. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, served by Rooks and Purdue on the return, but was that tipped? They'll give the point to DePaul as a little bit too hard of a spike by Hillary Fox and 16-3. Rooks now will get it over. Back set and a spike and a kill for Faye Adelaja. 17-13 now the score. Good back set by Rachel Davis in the middle of the court on the middle of the front line. And Adelaja from the right side hits it right into the middle for a kill. 17-13 now and Amanda Neal will serve it for Purdue. She gets it over. Zapranova at the back line with the dig. Witt back to Zapranova. Double blocked. And a kill, a roof, excuse me, for a double block. Katie Griffin and Faye Adelaja, 18-13 now. Purdue on a little bit of a rally after DePaul and had just, two points in a just row. Just to give an update, Michigan State wins all three against Bradley, so something to be noted there. Serve over by Neal. And now a back set by Witt to Shutava. She gets it over, kept alive by Purdue. Good dig by Davis. Sent back over. Annie Drews actually contacted that one right into the net. She was at the 10-foot line out of bounds and couldn't quite get enough air under that one. A shout out to Aaron Javatsky for that lovely score update from court three. Again, all those games live on our sister station, ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. Aubrey Horde now comes into the game to serve. She serves it over to the right front line. Good dig, and Purdue will be able to dig it out. And Annie Drews a little bit too far on the spike attempt, so 18-15, just out of bounds by Annie Drews, the left-handed spiker. Like we said, you're, you're, you're intrigued to see which team's going to want it more here in the third and final. Oh, look at that. Ace is the place, as Pete would say, for Aubrey Horde as she hits that one right into the middle of the court and a miscommunication by Purdue on who is going to dig that one out. Timeout Boilermakers, 18-16 Purdue with the lead here in set number three. Join the Slaughter Broadcast team. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports for more information. That's beonair.com slash Chicago Sports. Welcome to your new home for the Chicago Slaughter, sportstownchicago.com in a league of our own. If you're a Slaughter fan, then stay tuned all season for all home games broadcast live on SportstownChicago.com. Also hear the replay of all the home games by going to SportstownChicago.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only here can you download the free podcasts of all games. Fellas, I can't wait till the toe hits the leather. You can also check out the blog, calendar, and more. Again, SportstownChicago.com. If you didn't tune in to Cooley and Shivari last month, DePaul now trying to keep a rally going. Purdue keeps it alive. Rizzo with the block, and she keeps it alive. Rooks will get it over, and now Purdue will keep it alive. That's Rip Barcek with a spike over, kept alive by DePaul. Now Hubner sends it back to the middle. Dig and a spike by Annie Drews right in front of the diving Aubrey Horde. 1916 big win on the rally by Purdue. Well, yeah, and that's what you like to see is Purdue just coming out of the timeout, keeping that momentum. Let's see if DePaul can rebound. Serving will be Carly Kramer. She will get a line drive over. Zapranova with the dig. Back set and be Abby Fleener with a spike, but good dig by Davis. 
and sent back over by Rabarchik, unable to be fielded by DePaul. Two straight points for the Boilermakers off their timeout, 2016. One thing to note, we talked about this a bit earlier in this third set, Purdue doing a fine job finding where the gaps are, finding where those weak spots are in the DePaul defense and attacking. Serve over by Kramer and spike back by Rizzo, kept alive by Purdue, back set by Davis to Drew. She gets it over, kept alive by DePaul, good dig by Huebner, Zapranova will get it over on a spike. Good dig by Neal, and then big spike and double block out of bounds by DePaul, so point for Purdue, give the kill to Amanda Neal, or was that Rabarchek? Actually, that was Rabarchek, and timeout DePaul as they see this one slipping away, down 21-16. We'll be back in a minute here on SportstownChicago.com. Hey, friends, this is Tom Waddle. You may know me as good old number 87 or as the better half of the Waddle and Sylvie show. People often ask me, hey, Tom, how could you be so slow and make it in football? Well, I ignore that question, and then they ask, Tom, how can I be on radio and TV like you? I tell them it takes drive and determination, and you need to learn how it all works. At the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, you can do just that. ICB's enrolling students for day and evening classes right now. You can learn how to be a sports talk show host, a producer, do play-by-play -play or shoot and edit video. Plus, you'll have a chance to get internships where you can tap into the knowledge of industry pros. They have affordable tuition and financial aid for those who qualify. And with job placement assistance, you can start your new career in less than a year. The Abby Fleener with a big kill as we come back here on SportstownChicago.com with a bang. Set 21-17, good back set by Aubrey Horde and the Abby Fleener from the right side of the court able to get a cross-court spike and a kill. Summoned her Diamond Dallas Page from good 90s wrestling right there. Bang! <laughs> court will be cleaned up by um, Carly Kramer, so we have a little bit of a delay. My name is Brendan Marshall. I am alongside the doctor, Pete Ferreira. No, I'm not the. There's only one the on this broadcast. Okay, and okay. There's We're one not... the, and it ain't me. <laughs> I like that. Zapranova with a spike. Good dig by Kramer, but DePaul will able, be able to return it as Kramer set up a kill perfectly for the Blue Demons at the front line. 21-18 now. Yeah, not slowing them down right now. You know, they had that disadvantage, but, you know, you got Zapranova at the helm right there. Anything can happen. Zapranova with three big bounces and then five little bounces, a high ball serve, and then the serve itself. Good dig by Kramer. And now back, and DePaul will be able to look like they oh, were able to violation. dig it out, but, but a net violation on the Blue Demons. So 22-18 Purdue with the lead, and Kate Workman, the freshman defensive specialist, will come in and serve. And that's the unfortunate part is you you know you have situations where you're shooting yourself in the foot like we talked about. Speaking of which, oh, a violation on Purdue, so point two to Paul. Okay, well they're giving it right back. <laughs> or not a time for DePaul to go one for one. You got a two for one deal right now. Kmart special is what you need. Natalie Rizzo will serve it. She gets it over. Kramer with the dig, and now back set right to Jones, and it is blocked out of bounds by Randy Leaf, so give the kill to Kiera Jones. Block was there, just not in the right position. Again, Purdue taking advantage. Hillary Fox now will come in and serve. Hillary Fox is a junior. She is an outside hitter. She serves it over. Good dig by Zapranova. The second hit hit the net, and so did the third hit as Callie Hubner. Could not quite get that one up in the air, so match point and set point for the Boilermakers. Well, match point in any normal circumstance. Yeah. But uh, anyway, 24-19, Fox will get it over on the serve. The Abby Fleener with a spike, but it is blocked out of bounds by Purdue, so the Abby Fleener with another kill, and the tag team of her and Horde will... Yeah. Touch hands with the tag team of Witt and Shutava, and Witt will come in and serve. You know what's something to think about, too? Think about when you have players like Fleener and uh, Hubner that are seniors. I mean, that's just going to be – who's going to stop that? <laughs> we'll have to see in about uh, two years. Yeah, true. Um, Katie Griffin gets it over on the spike, but good return by DePaul. Now Kiera Jones, good double block. Purdue trying to keep it alive, and they will not as the – third hit attempt by Carly Kramer, the defensive specialist. She did a barrel roll, but couldn't quite get it to the net. 24-21 now, and now Laura Witt 
was about ready to serve and Purdue yeah. wasn't ready as they were cleaning up the court. I wonder if she could have served one there and gotten a free point. Yeah, who knows, but either way, she uh, she jumped in there and, uh, hey, you gotta clean up your own mess, literally. <laughs> I will not respond to that one. I'll just say that Witt will serve it over and oh. that will cost her team as just like Purdue earlier, she went over the line on the serve, so. 25-21, Purdue wins this one, two games to one. Stay tuned for match number two between the DePaul Blue Demons and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, an old Big East battle, coming up next here on SportstownChicago.com. Hi, it's Dave Jude. If you'd love a career in sports, check out the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports or text Chicago Sports to 33239. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting trains you for on-air and behind the scenes in radio, TV, and web with internships, financial aid for those who qualify, and job placement. Start your career in less than a year. Check out exciting sports careers at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports or text Chicago Sports to 33239. With football season finally around the corner. That ain't true! Yes, it is, and that's why you need the Sports Hump for your pigskin fix. Wednesdays from 10 to 1, Rick and Ian... They like playing with each other. Well, that may be true, but they will break down the thoughts of the brightest minds in the game. D playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? I don't know anything. It's Division One football! It's the Big 12! Cannot play with them. Cannot win with them. Cannot coach with them. Can't do it. Throw off any... Uh, uh, of our geniusness. So tune in to the Sports Hump Wednesdays from 10 to 1 on SportstownChicago.com. SportstownChicago.com is the internet sports station that is located at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, Illinois. We offer you a chance, or should I say, an opportunity to become an on air personality, get invited to live sporting events, and we teach you how to interact with your listeners, get the training you need to get in the broadcasting industry. Just go to SportstownChicago.com or dial 630-916-1700. SportstownChicago.com, the only place where you can talk Pokemon with the Pokemaster. <laughs> Bringing you all the pressing topics brought to you by SportstownChicago.com. SportstownChicago.com is now bringing you behind the scenes with contestants from NBC's The Biggest Loser. Holy cow! Check out SportstownChicago.com slash Biggest Loser to download exclusive interviews with past contestants and winners. Why are we so blessed? Listen as they talk dieting, sports, hobbies, and life after The Biggest Loser. <laughs> so log on to SportstownChicago.com slash Biggest Loser now. God bless the internet. SportstownChicago.com in a league of our own. SportstownChicago.com brings you the inside information and winning strategies from the top coaches in the state of Illinois for high school sports in their web video series, The Coach's Corner. Hear about how the coaches and players of the elite teams in the state practice in the offseason, stories that inspire them to achieve, pregame rituals, superstitions, and much more. Find out how the best of the best are the best with the Sportstown Chicago Coach's Corner. Only on SportstownChicago.com in a league of our own. SportstownChicago.com is the internet sports station that is located at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, Illinois. We offer you a chance, or should I say an opportunity, to become an on-air personality, get invited to live sporting events, and we teach you how to interact with your listeners, get the training you need to get in the broadcasting industry. Just go to SportstownChicago.com or dial 630 916-1700. Está escuchando el Panador. JC. 